Je m'appelle Anna et euh, je suis de Paris. Euh, je suis venue pour euh, le documentary Caps TV. Euh, hier, on est allé euh, donc, euh, chez les Stones. On les a interviewés pour faire euh, un documentaire sur eux. Et euh, on a filmé et on a pris des photos. Art City is a collective experience where artists can learn from one another, help one another, and where the whole community can come and participate with the creative process. It's based on the way studios were for many years in Europe, where there was apprenticeship, and the apprenticeship you would evolve to a place where you finally quit sweeping the shop and you got to help make some of the mess. And to see it, see art the way it's made rather than to see it in a finished room is a very different experience. It, it's like you would have half, you'd have 10 times more questions if you couldn't have experienced the place. Um, Art City was, it was an interesting experience. I liked, I liked looking at the stone garden and all of the, the stones that they put down and how they set them up. Well, I don't know if it was his art piece, but I really liked the rock garden he did. The stone garden came as a result of collecting a lot of stone, a lot of large stones. The stone garden itself has the, are the largest stones probably in Ventura County. Some of them are 50,000 pounds and 17 feet tall. And that's with the bottom cut on them and, and structural stabilization pins put in them. I uh, did filming of uh, the art city and um, did some interviews. I do bronze casting and um, a little bit of metal work and not too much. This is, you know, when you're carving stone, it's sort of like the, um, you become a surgeon in stone, basically. It, it, it takes everything you've got. It takes all your time and all your energy because the problems in it are so complex. Every stone is different and there's a lot, a lot of different stones. So there's, there's so many things that I haven't even learned yet in 40 years of carving that, you know, I, I can't see that in this lifetime that, you know, I can uh, do too many more things. I interviewed Paul, like I said. Um, I did the mic for Joanne. I filmed chickens. I looked at all the cool stones that were around me. I went to the stone garden and I um, I was videotaping that. It was super cool. I was hanging out with my friends. It was pretty fun and that's what I did. I was a sound person for um, Paul uh, and I recorded the interview with Joanne. I've been a sculptor and an artist my whole life. So uh, that's 45 years of making things. And I started as a painter, and it was too tedious. I didn't have enough physical activity, so I became a sculptor. It's much more satisfying. And it turns out, in art, you can't sculpt all the time. So sculpting involved the possibility of collecting the stuff I sculpt, going and finding rocks, going and finding wood, that sort of thing. The chickens, they were... Um, frankly, I w they're they're pretty funny because they just they just walk around, they stop, they eat their cantaloupe, walk around more, and then there's one chicken who just makes noise. Well, I mean, you know, a few uh, yeah, they mostly behave, but there was this one chicken that was just going off. He was like, Grrr! and it was super loud, and everybody could hear it. And it was only him. And he was like a baby. He was like this small. And he was like, good, good. We're striking it all day long. And, and so it's kind of like a little bit like drumming. So I'm hearing sounds that are traveling through the stones. So it's important that we're always listening because if that that tone changes during the carve. It means either the crack is developing in the stone 
and it's not going to be good or um, and we need to look and see what's going on and it's just sort of something I always have in the back of my mind that I'm listening to that rock. Again, there's, there's a lot of approaches to how you would carve a stone. Um, by being the collector of all the stones here, most people don't go collect their own stones. I get to choose stones that are close to something that I already find real interesting. So in a typical carving of mine, even though I might spend as long on it as anyone else, I'll take a 400 pound stone and make a 350 pound carving. I hardly take anything away because I already liked what I had. I'm enhancing it so that the image at the end is some of the stone and it's some of me. There are many different types of stone in hardnesses and softnesses and you know, densities and so there's there's so much of it. There is There are my favorites during the years that I... But almost every rock's my favorite. You, right after carving it, it's always my favorite rock to carve, or right when I'm doing it, it's always my favorite. But I would say I have about five favorite stones. And um, so I sometimes save those for, I call it my chocolate moments, when I treat myself to a fun thing. I, I get out one of my favorite stones to carve and carve it, because it's fun for me, it's, it's exciting, and I just love it. All of the things, all of them were made almost out of stone and it was, um, made them very pretty, but they were still amazing to think about that they were made out of stone. She had a rock on a pedestal and it had a bunch of different sized holes in it. Uh, oui, parce que uh, je pense que c'était un bon endroit, parce que uh, on a pu bah, mieux connaître. Moi, je, personnellement, je connaissais pas du tout. Et uh, du coup, bah, ça m'a appris des choses. Et, uh, ça because looking back on how they put them in and how much they weigh is pretty crazy to think. I mean, imagine putting a, an eight-ton stone in the middle of a garden. I liked it a lot. I thought it was really fun because I interviewed someone who was very... Uh, really important to Ventura City, well, the city of Ventura, and I finally got to meet him. I got to interview him for the first time. I got to really see about, I have really learned a lot about stones, and I learned a lot about Art City. Art City is a wonderful place, and what's so great about it is a lot of my students, my former students, now work around me and with me, so I get to see them keep growing and, and, and getting to be better and better carvers. And usually carving is a very isolated type of thing that most people do. You don't get to share a lot of it. Here we do get to share that. We used to get, we can walk over to other people's studios and see how things are going, seeing how they're working out a problem. It's, it's all good.